Gator viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel today's question is Subi or not Subi I know that sounds pretty deep but it's the best Subaru joke I could come up with customer bought a 2003 Subaru Forester color gray I've got the keys uh, it's a new to them they totaled out their other one big Subaru fans they love their Subarus they want this one checked over to see if it's a gem or a junker uh, but they also said that while they're driving it, after they picked it up from the dealer, wherever that may be, uh, the money light came on, the AC quit working, and that's about it so far. The rest is up to us. It's warm in here. 108.927 on the clock. 12.59 on that clock. 12.59 on this clock. So we're gonna take, we'll just pop in generic here real quick and uh, see what codes it has. Hopefully not the dreaded PO420 that plagues essentially every Subaru on the planet and hopefully for their sake it does not, you know, have a leaking head gasket at least yet. So I'll let this figure out which protocol this runs on. I think it's pretty clean. It smells fresh. Smells kind of like a Subaru. I don't know if you guys are working on cars. Subarus have their own smell. I guess it would be. As do some other cars. Here we go. We're all loaded up. Place your bets. Subaru. So we can either have an EVAP code from a leaky gas tank filler neck. We could have a fouled catalytic converter. Or the famous Subaru Knox sensor is going to be my guess. Let's just look at vehicle stats, make sure our drive cycle is finished. And it says monitor is okay, seven incomplete, zero. So that's good, the entire drive cycle is done. It does say that we have one code. We will back back up. Place your bets now. I'm going with Calic Converter, that's my guess. Or Knox sensor, or EVAP. Those are my three guesses. EVAP. System leak detected, fuel cap loose or off. So that's your PO457. Pretty dang common on these to have a rotted out fuel tank filler neck. Um, almost to the point you can just kind of go visual inspection and see. Uh, but we won't guess. We'll give her give her a little look over. Let's fire this pig up. Ooh, sounds pretty good. That's a cold start. A little bit of a heat shield rattle under there. Not a big surprise. Quiet. Oh wow, this car actually has an ashtray. Look at this. Like for cigarettes. And it, is this a lighter? Oh no, it's a dummy one. Oh man. I was gonna go get some smokes. But yeah, an ash an ashtray. Oh I man. Plastic. Made in Japan. <laughs> well that's fun. If you're a smoker. Yeah. Uh oh how do you open it there we go uh anyhow let's see i did hear the ac uh whoa fella i did hear the ac pump kick on shut off all this stuff hear it maybe they just didn't have it turned on on cold because i mean it's already cold These folks have driven Subarus, so they're, I assume, familiar with their controls. So, which I thought was kind of odd because AC failure in Subarus is pretty low on the list of Subaru failures. All right, let's take it for a two. You guys gonna be able to stay there without falling over? Paving Main Street here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. I don't hear 
hear any wheel bearings, so that's a good sign. Unless I'm mistaken, I mean, the AC feels nice cold. We'll stick a thermometer in I'm guessing 41 degrees. That's my guess. Feels nice and tight. Stopping at speed. Oh, smooth. Real smooth. Pedal effort feels normal. Well, that's a good sign already. Oh, I forgot my turn signal. Feel a little rattles on the inside, but I suppose that's to be expected. It's 15 years old. Dude. First observation after test drive, bring it in, put a lift under it, it stinks. It smells like burning oil. You can smell it burning off the manifold when I brought it in and it actually was smoking a little bit. And I also think I smell transmission fluid burning, uh, you know, perhaps off the exhaust or it's the stuff they use to shine the engine. Also, the other thing that's concerning when I put the lift under the rear, it's looking a little crusty. So before we even do anything, any further, let's have a look at the amount of rust underneath it. option for picking it up. Oh yeah, she's rough. Had to come in on this support. Pinch rolls are completely gone. She's rough, Vinny. So that is the cross member that holds the front of the rear differential in. And it's just gone, there's nothing left to it. Kind of dangerous sticking my finger up in there. Yeah, that's probably why they got rid of this car. I mean, granted that's just a support that goes over this bolt, but yuck. judge what's the burning smell we have oh yeah leaking oil out from the time and cover there that is transmission fluid out why is the oil red how come the oil's red Vinny oh there it is huh well there's a red drip on the bottom of the oil filter but yeah, we could see transmission fluid up there on that cooler hose. So it's likely just leaking right out of the bottom of the radiator there. And perhaps just spraying back and dripping on the filter. A lot of rough miles. Yeah, she's a little uglier on the bottom than she is on the top. Oh yeah. Well. judge I'm not sure if they should put any money into this car or not which kind of sucks because they already did so this part concerns me here on the front subframe looks pretty heavily rotted right. so, I mean, it's got a hole right through the subframe there rust hole pretty solid otherwise but It ain't gonna be long for this world. One rust hole there. Um, 
boy. Come to the back. Like I say, this is the uh, front cross member, which essentially is tied to the rear differential and it's all kind of coupled with the rear cradle. It's all part of the structure. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just, just gone. There's just nothing there. Uh, like I say, I had to lift on this one support because you know, the pinch welds, everything here just gone. It's nothing but undercoat rotten out right underneath it. Um, yeah, there's just nothing there. Looks like the same, same thing on this side. It's all rotted out underneath the undercoat. bolt hole on the other side. Yeah. I don't know who put the inspection sticker on it, but the other thing I noticed, which is also a failure in New York State, is the seat belt light. Subarus have really annoying seat belt lights, and I noticed it wasn't buzzing on me when I was driving. Somebody has bypassed it. worth putting any money into in my opinion but most of the other stuff is relatively solid the other observation I make right off the bat is the mismatched tires I don't believe they're mismatched in size but they're mismatched in tread so what are these 215 60s and then these are 215.60s. Same size, two totally different brands, two totally different tread types. That transfer clutch in the back of the transmission will flip you the bird if you keep driving it like this. And I see these are brand new, relatively new. Let's see if we can find a date code on them here. Must be on the inside. Mm -hmm. Get a flashlight, we'll see. Is that a curiosity? Made in China, it says. Where's our DOT numbers? These were made in the sixth week of 2018. This one's probably exactly the same. Yep, 0618, so sixth week of 2018. And these ones are, gotta be a lot older, they look pretty weather cracked. The 45th week of 2005, so those tires are pretty dang old. 13 year old tire you can tell because they're starting to dry crack pretty good you see all the little well, you might not be able to see it on video but they don't fail inspection for that because they're not cracked to the cords but you can just tell they're a super old tire fair amount of weather checking on the inside wonder if we can see that filler neck like i said it's likely where their leak is going to be their evap leak uh we can't we're gonna have to try to get to the upper part of it 90% of the time these are too rotted to take off. Yeah. It's just gonna twist right off. See if the top one comes off. It feels like it's already broke. Yeah, that's already broke. So maybe we can just have a little visual inspection here. There goes the spider. Bite the spider. Oh yeah. Oh, is it crusty? <laughs> right up here, the old crusty crab. The old crusty crab. <laughs> oh, yuck. Typically, these valves on top of the filler necks, yeah, you know, they got a wad of dirt sitting on top of them. That's where they rust out. Not saying that's where this one's rusted out, but it's a pretty good candidate. My concern is they're struck oily. How much are they going to realistically sink into this car? Oh, what was that? Right in my pocket. One disadvantage to the pocket tee. I'll just leave that on. I'll see if they want to dump any money into this. It would be my recommendation that they don't. Just personal opinion because I see where this is heading. Subi or not Subi? That was the question. 
You can see a bunch of flakes on the ground there. Uh, I hate to be the Grim Reaper. Unfortunately, part of my job duties is just that, is to give the folks the bad news. Unfortunately, they've already bought this car. Now, I don't know if there's any laws regarding you know, the dealer, the borrower. I see it's still got a temporary registration on it. Uh, it certainly should have never been inspected, uh, at least, you know, here at our shop. You start getting deterioration like that, you know, no way. Uh, not especially when it starts getting into the main structures of the car. I'll inform them. Ultimately, it's up to the customer. They're going to dump a pile of money into this. Uh, you've seen the oil coming out of the timing cover, so, you know, likely that cam seal or, you know, crank seal is slinging over on the timing belt. Um, because it spins in that direction up and around so if it's leaking out of either one of those and dripping down on the belt you know it's going to sling over to that side of the cover uh, of course you got the transmission fluid leaks leaking around the bottom of the radiator there i didn't touch it because if you touch it and now it's all of a sudden pouring on the ground now you're in big trouble uh so i'll let them know what i observed there and of course you know the massive amounts of corrosion uh, that are underneath it the corrosion on the subframe uh, you know, of course, the engine light, I mean, they can quickly pile a ton of money into this car, which is ultimately going to end up at the crusher next year. So I'll see what they say. Let me make you a balloon again. Make you a balloon art. Hand, huh? Uh, huh? That's so realistic. Utter. <laughs> Milk the cow, come on. Mmm. Mmm. Anywho, Mrs. O, I was telling the people, gotta be the bad guy, one of the faces of SMA. I like it when you're the bad guy. I usually make her call and be like, Pfft. I am not a good She's not a good person to no. do that. I have too much like, compassion. Uh, oh, I was gonna turn you the other way, but never mind. Put you off this stool all about that for not having compassion. So, that's too bad, because this lady's a nice lady, right? One of, your, one of our favorite customers. Mm -hmm. And, and that's it. I got a collar now. I'm just working up to it. I know, because she was like, I found this beautiful car. It looks nice. It does. It's clean. It smells like a Subaru. You get What's in there, you just like, Subaru, huh? What's wrong with it? She's rusty. Uh -oh. Really rusty. There it is. Every freaking time. That's it, folks. Talk to the customer. They're on their, we're going to take it back to the dealer because they did just recently purchase it and see what they want to do. Kind of take it from there. Out of my hands. Wrote them up, Bill. Seen what I found and gave them the grocery list. The rest is up to them. Uh, but in my opinion, like I say, I don't see them making a good decision to keep the car, you know, considering uh, the stuff we found. Yes, it is repairable, and if I was shady, I'd just tell them everything it needs and don't tell them that it's all rotted out. But I'm not like that, so I um, hate giving the bad news, but it's part of the job. Part of your job is to go down, click subscribe, ring the bell, and all that stuff. Find us around on our socials and Patreon. Just my viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.